Hey everybody. Okay, so today we're going to talk about body and mind are symptoms of ignorance. It's chapter 54 in I Am That Book, page 221. The body and the mind are only symptoms of ignorance, of misapprehension. Behave as if you are pure awareness, bodiless and mindless, spaceless and timeless, beyond where and when and how. Dwell on it. Think of it. Learn to accept it as reality. Questioner. One day we were Vyakti, Vyakta, Avyakta, the person witness absolute. As far as I remember, you said that the absolute alone is real and the witness is the absolute only at a given point in space and time. The person is the organism, gross and subtle, illuminated by the presence of the witness. I did not seem to grasp the matter clearly. Could we discuss it again? You also use the terms Mahatakash, Chittakash, and Paramakash. How are they related to person, witness, and the absolute? Maharaj. Mahadakash is nature, the ocean of existence, the physical space with all that can be contracted, which, with all that can be contacted through the senses. Chittakash is the expanse of awareness, the mental space of time, perception, and cognition. Paramakash is the timeless and spaceless reality, mindless, undifferentiated, the infinite potentiality, the source and origin, the substance and the essence, both matter and consciousness, yet beyond both. It cannot be perceived, but can be experienced as ever witnessing the witness, perceiving the perceiver, the origin and the end of all manifestation, the root of time and space, the prime cause in every chain of causation. So let's go through this. Since I'm, I'm a book reader, I, I do what I do, you know what I mean? So let's go through this from the beginning. So start at the very, very beginning because we're going to make a complete circle. So we start up here as the pure awareness, the source comes down into form, becomes consciousness. Okay. The Sargadana has a book prior to consciousness. So what is prior to consciousness? It is the pure awareness. Okay. So we got the pure awareness. When it comes, when pure awareness comes into form, it is consciousness. It is in a more, limited uh, form, fashion, amount, quantity, um, then the pure awareness, which is everywhere. Okay? So, Mahatakash is the nature, the ocean of existence, the physical space, with all that can be contracted through the senses. So we're talking about the body there. Chittakash, we're talking about the mind, the expanse of awareness, the mental space of time perception. So that's how you know we're talking about the mind. And cognition, paramakash, is the timeless and spaceless reality, mindless, undifferentiated, the infinite potentiality, which is the pure awareness. Pure awareness comes into form as consciousness. We got the body mind. When it leaves, it goes back into pure awareness. Okay. The source and origin, the substance and the essence, both matter and consciousness, yet beyond both, it cannot be perceived, but can be experienced as ever witnessing the witness, perceiving the perceiver, the
the origin and the end of all manifestation, the root of time and space, the prime cause in every chain of causation, the pure awareness. Questioner, what is the difference between Vyakta and Avyakta? Maharaj, there is no difference. It is like light and daylight. The universe is full of light, which you do not see, but the same light you see as daylight. And what the daylight reveals is the Vyakta, the Vyakti, sorry. The person is always the object, the witness is the subject, and their relation of mutual dependence is the reflection of their absolute identity. The person is the object, the witness is the subject. So we have to remember the, the witness, the self, is always the subject. Remember, I keep telling you, you cannot see the self, you can only be the self. So anything you can see, hear, feel, touch, uh, believe, think, anything, anything um, is the object because we are actually perceiving it, witnessing it. So the self is the subject, everything else is the object, everything else, okay? And anything that is the object, you are not. The person is always the object, the witness is the subject, and the relation of mutual dependence is the reflection of their absolute identity. Both are actually consciousness. Both are actually consciousness. You imagine that they are distinct and separate states. They are not. They are the same consciousness. <laughs> they are the same consciousness at rest and in movement. But I'm just a reader. I just read books. That's all. <laughs> they are distinct and separate states. They are not. They are the same consciousness at rest and in movement. Each state conscious of the other. In Chit, man knows God and God knows man. In Chit, man shapes the world and the world shapes man. Chit is the link, the bridge. between extremes, the balancing and uniting factor in every experience, the totality of the perceived is what you call matter. The totality of all perceivers is what you call the universal mind. The identity of the two manifesting itself as perceptibility and perceiving Harmony and intelligence, loveliness and loving reasserts itself eternally. Questioner, the three gunas, sattva, rajas, tamas, are they only in matter or also in the mind? Maharaj, in both of course, because the two are not separate. It is only the absolute that is beyond gunas. In fact, these are but points of views, ways of looking. They exist only in the mind. Beyond the mind, all distinctions cease. Questioner, is the universe a product of the senses? Maharaj, just as you recreate your world on waking up, so is the universe unrolled. The mind with its five organs of perception, five organs of action, and five vehicles of consciousness appears as memory, thought, reason, and selfhood. Questioner, the sciences have made much progress. We know the body and the mind much better than our ancestors did. Your traditional way describing and analyzing mind and matter is no longer valid. Maharaj, but where are your scientists with their sciences? Are they not again images in your own mind? You get that? Where are your scientists with their sciences? This is, this is the reality and it's amazing. Where are your scientists? They're, 
we're imagining them as separate individual people that do not exist, okay? And where is the science? Where is the science? The science is a concept that was born in Maya by the people in the sleep. So this is what he's asking the question of, where are your scientists and where is where are their sciences? Questioner. Oh no, Maharaj, but where are your scientists and with their sciences? Are they not again images in your own mind? that we are believing because we're still believing that we are this personhood, we are attached to the body-mind. We are believing that these are people um, separate from us. That is all delusion. That is all delusion because there is only consciousness. Questioner, here lies the basic difference. To me, they are not my own projections. They were before I was born and shall be there when I am dead. Maharaj, of course. Once you accept time and space as real, you will consider yourself minute and short-lived. But are they real? Do they depend on you or you on them? As body, you are in space. As mind, you are in time. But are you mere body with a mind in it? Have you ever investigated? How important is that question? How important is that question? Are you a mere body with a mind in it? No, both of them are able to be observed. This is why he's saying time and space don't even exist. Questioner, I had neither the motive nor the method. Maharaj, I am suggesting both. But the actual work of insight and detachment, viveka, vir viragya, is yours. Questioner, the only motive I can perceive is my own causeless and timeless happiness. And what is the method? Maharaj, happiness is incidental. The true and effective motive is love. You see people suffer and you seek the best way of helping them. The answer is obvious. First, put yourself beyond the need of help. Be sure your attitude is of pure goodwill, free of expectation of any kind. Those who seek mere happiness may end up in sublime indifference, while love will never rest. As to the method, there is only one. You must come to know yourself, both what you appear to be and what you are. Clarity and charity go together. Each needs and strengthens the other. Questioner, compassion implies the existence of an objective world full of avoidable sorrow. Maharaj, the world is not objective and the sorrow of it is not avoidable. Compassion is but another word for the refusal to suffer for imaginary reasons. I love that. <laughs> Compassion is but another word for the refusal to suffer for imaginary reasons. Questioner, if the reasons are imaginary, why should the suffering be inevitable? Maharaj, it is always the false that makes you suffer, the false desires and fears, the false values and ideas, the false relationships between people. Abandon the false and you are free of pain. Truth makes happy. Truth liberates. Questioner. The truth is that I am a mind imprisoned in a body. And this is a very unhappy truth. Maharaj, you are neither the body. You are neither the body nor in the body. There is no such thing as the body. You have grievously misunderstood yourself. To understand rightly, investigate. You are neither the body nor in the body nor the mind. You are neither the body nor the mind. Now rightly investigate. 
question her, but I was born as a body, in a body, and shall die with the body, as a body. Poor guy. Maharaj, this is your misconception. Inquire, investigate, doubt yourself and others. To find truth, you must not cling to your convictions. If you are sure of the immediate, you will never reach the ultimate. Your idea that you were born and that you will die is absurd. Both logic and experience contradict it. Questioner, all right, I shall not insist that I am the body. You have a point here. But here and now, as I talk to you, I am in the body, obviously. The body may not be me, but it is mine. Maharaj, the entire universe contributes incessantly to your existence. Hence, the entire universe is your body. In that sense, I agree. Do you understand? Pure awareness of consciousness, you, where what we, everything we can see and everything that we can't even see. So it's the dark matter also that we are. What we can't see is the dark matter. We're everything. So it's not, it, I say now that we're not only this body, but we are everybody. We are everything. There's nothing that is not us. Questioner, my body influences me deeply in more than one way. My body is my destiny, my character, my moods, the nature of my reactions, my desires and fears, inborn or acquired. They are all based on the body. A little alcohol, some drug, or other and all changes until the drug wears off I become another man Maharaj all of this happens because you think yourself to be the body realize your real self and even drugs will have no power over you questioner do you smoke Maharaj my body has kept a few habits which may as well continue until it dies there is no harm in them questioner do you eat meat Maharaj I was born, born among meat-eating people, and my children eat meat. I eat very little and make no fuss. Questioner, meat-eating implies killing. Maharaj, obviously, I make no claims of consistency. You think absolute consistency is possible? Prove it by example. Don't preach what you don't practice. Coming back to the, to the idea of having been born, you are stuck with what your parents told you, all about conception, pregnancy and birth, infant, child, youngster, teenager, and so on. Now, divest yourself of the idea that you are the body with the help of the contrary idea that you are not the body. It is also an idea, no doubt. Treat it like something to be abandoned when its work is done. The idea that I am not the body gives reality to the body when in fact there is no such thing as the body it is but a state of mind you can have as many and as diverse bodies as you like just remember steadily what you want and reject the incompatibles questioner i am like a box within a box within a box the outer box act, acting as the body and the one next to it as the indwelling soul abstract the outer box and the next becomes the body and the next to it the soul it is an infinite series an endless opening of boxes is the last one the ultimate soul maharaj if you have a body you must have a soul here your simile of a nest of boxes applies but here and now for all your bodies and souls shines awareness the pure light of chit. Hold on to it unswervingly, without awareness. The body would not last a second. Without the consciousness, the body would not last a second. The body is always, Miss Argadotta describes the body as the food body for the consciousness. The body is sustained by the food that we eat. And that's it. And it's here to house the consciousness. When the consciousness leaves the form, this form is a corpse.
But here and now, through all of your bodies and souls, shines awareness, the pure light of chit. Hold on to it unswervingly. Without awareness, the body would not last a second. There is in the body a current of energy, affection, and intelligence which guides, maintains, and energizes the body. Discover that current and stay with it. Of course, all of these are manners of speaking. Words are as much a barrier as a bridge. Find the spark of life that weaves the tissues of your body and be with it. It is the only reality the body has. And what is that? What is the life force of the body? It is the prana. It is the prana. Question, what happens to that spark of life after death? Maharaj, it is beyond time. Birth and death are but points in time. Life weaves eternally its many webs. The weaving is in time, but life itself is timeless. Whatever name and shape you give to its expressions, it is like the ocean, never changing, ever changing. Never changing, ever changing. I love these. I love all these um, examples he gives. Like the ocean, never changing, ever changing. So the ocean looks like it changes with all of the waves that pop up. But, but in reality, it's all the same water. So it's ever changing, never changing. Okay? Questioner, what happens to that spark of life after death? Oh, I said that already. Questioner, all you say sounds beautifully convincing, yet my feeling of being just a person in a world, strange and alien, often inimical and dangerous, does not cease. Being a person limited in space and time, how can I possibly realize myself as the opposite, a deep personalized, universalized awareness of nothing in particular? Maharaj, you assert yourself to be what you are not and deny yourself to be what you are. You omit the element of pure cognition, of awareness free from all personal distortions. Unless you admit the reality of chit, you will never know yourself. Questioner, what am I to do? I do not see myself as you see me. Maybe you are right and I am wrong. But how, how can I cease to be what I feel I am? Maharaj, a prince who believes himself to be a beggar can be convinced conclusively in one way only. He must behave as a prince and see what happens. Behave as if what I say is true and judge by what actually happens. All I ask is the little faith needed for making the first step. With experience will come confidence, and you will not need me anymore. I know what you are, and I'm telling you, trust me for a while. Questioner, to be here and now, I need my body and its senses. To understand, I need a mind. Maharaj, the body and mind are only symptoms of ignorance, of misapprehension. Behave as if you are pure awareness, bodiless and mindless, spaceless and timeless, beyond where and when and how. Dwell on it. Think of it. Learn to accept its reality. Don't oppose it and deny it all the time. Keep an open mind at least. Yoga is bending the outer to the inner. Make your mind and body express the real, which is all and beyond all. By doing, you succeed, not by arguing. Questioner, kindly allow me to come back to my first question. How does the error of being a person originate? Maharaj, the absolute precedes time. Awareness comes first. A bundle of memories and mental habits attracts attention. Awareness becomes focalized and a person subtly appears. Remove the light of awareness, go to sleep or swoon away and the person disappears. The person, Vyakti, flickers awareness, Vyakta, contains all the space and time. The absolute Avyakta is. 
in all of these teachings, I have to tell you the truth, in all of these teachings, I mean, they're saying the same thing over and over again. Nisargadatta, Muji, Ramana, they're all saying the same thing over and over again. It's, it's all about how the personhood is developed. So if we, we already know. So the personhood develops the second that the consciousness knows that it exists. When, when the I am knows that it's here and it sees itself as separate from everything in its surroundings. Okay? So it's at that point that we start learning concepts. Like immediately we start learning concepts. We start seeing our parents as as those people over there, those body and minds over there. And because they're in the sleep, they see us the same way and they're teaching us the ways of Maya. This is how the personhood gets started. Then we, we, uh, we're surrounded by our family all in the sleep. We start going to church, people all in the sleep. <coughs> we start learning what the, what the moral and ethical things are in life, the new concepts. We are continuously learning concepts throughout our entire life until we get that nudge that we need to start searching for who we are. And then the task becomes to peel away the concepts to go back to our original state, to that millisecond before the consciousness saw that it was separate from everything else around it. A millisecond before that, that consciousness was still pure awareness. And that's what this whole path is about. Peeling away the concepts, getting rid of the attachments and the desires, breaking free of the body-mind, breaking free of the ego, breaking free of name and form, breaking free of your own self-love and self-importance, breaking free of it all, breaking free of it all. <clears throat> so 55 now, give up all and you gain all. There is trouble only when you cling to something. When you hold on to nothing, no trouble arises. The relinquishing of the lesser is the gaining of the greater. Give up all and you gain all. Questioner, what is your state at the present moment? Maharaj, a state of non-experiencing. In it, all experience is included. Questioner, can you enter into the mind and heart of another man and share his experience? Maharaj, no. Such things require special training. I am like a dealer in wheat. I know little about breads and cakes. Even the taste of, of a wheat gruel, I may not know. But about the wheat grain, I know all and well. So what he's saying, he, he, he's not all into these mystical powers. Um, these are the lower level things that he had no interest in. He does not even want to discuss it. He does not want to practice it. He is in the ultimate space, the pure awareness. I know the source of all experience, but the innumerable particular forms experience can take, I do not know nor do I need to know. From, the, from moment to moment, the little I need to know to live my life, I, it's somehow I happen to know. Questioner, your particular existence and my particular existence, do they both exist in the mind of Brahma? Maharaj, the universal is not aware of the particular. The existence as a person is a personal matter. A person exists in time and space, has name and shape, beginning and end. The universal includes all persons, and the absolute is at the root of the root of and beyond all. Questioner, I am not concerned with the totality. My personal consciousness and your personal consciousness, 
What is the link between the two? Maharaj, between two dreamers, what can be the link? Questioner, they may dream of each other. Maharaj, that is what people are doing. Everyone imagines others and seeks the link between them. The seeker is the link. There is none other. Questioner, surely there must be something in common between the many points of consciousness we are. Maharaj, where are the many points? In your mind, you insist that your world is independent of your mind. How can it be? Your desire to know other people's minds is due to your not knowing your own mind. First know your own mind and you will find the question of others' minds does not arise at all. For there are no other people. You are the common factor, the only link between the minds. Being is consciousness. I am applies to all. Questioner, the supreme reality, power Brahman, may be present in all of us, but of what use is it to us? Maharaj, you are like a man who says, I need a place where I may keep my things, but of what use is space to me? Or I need milk, tea, coffee, or soda, but for water I have no use. Don't you see that the supreme reality is what makes everything possible? But if you ask, of what use is it to you? I must answer, none. In matters of daily life, the knower of the real has no advantage. He may even be at a disadvantage. Being free from greed and fear, he does not protect himself. The very idea of profit is foreign to him. He abhors accretions. His life is constant. Divesting, sharing, giving. Questioner, if there is no advantage in gaining the Supreme, then why take the trouble? Maharaj, there is trouble only when you cling to something. When you hold on to nothing, no trouble arises. The relinquishing of the lesser is the gaining of the greater. Give up all and you gain all. Then life becomes what it was meant to be, pure radiation from an inexhaustible source. In that light, the world appears dimly like a dream. Questioner, if my world is merely a dream and you are a part of it, what can you do for me? Boy, that is personhood, isn't it? What can you do for me? That is personhood. If the dream is not real, having no being, how can reality affect it? Maharaj, while it lasts, the dream has temporary being. It is your desire to hold on to it that creates the problem. Let go. Stop imagining that the dream is yours. Stop imagining that the personhood is real. Stop imagining that you are separate from everybody else. Stop imagining that uh, you are so important and, and all your wants, needs, uh, your self-importance, um, you think is everybody else's importance. It's so... The personhood is so selfish and egotistical. And um, you heard it right there. What can you do for me? It's, 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 it's got an ugly stench to it. It's got an ugly stench to it. Questioner, you seem to take for granted that there can be a dream without a dreamer and that I identify myself with the dream of my own sweet will. But I am the dreamer and the dream too. Who is to stop dreaming? Maharaj, let the dream unroll itself to its very end. You cannot help it, but you can look at the dream as a dream and refuse to the stamp of reality. See, here's, here's the, everything in a nutshell. We literally have, in the personhood, we literally have no control over when we're going to wake up. Um, the only thing that we can do is be earnest on our path, not accept the lies. We have to, we have to, um, 
we have to have Viveka. We have to be able to see through the lies of these fakes out here. And it's difficult sometimes because they're, they're Bible thumpers. They're fast talkers. They, they have this, this air of self-importance and, and you should uh, bow down to them. And it's intimidating to a lot of people who first start on a path. And then you get the concepts. Don't ever question or realize master because otherwise, and then the superstitions come in from religion. If you ever question or realize master, bad things will happen to you. All of these things are all concepts in the personhood and they all inhibit a person on a path from having true discernment because of fear, because of fear. If I question or realize master, bad things are going to happen to me. This is what people live with while they're in the personhood, not understanding that the personhood is not reality. It really is a, a dreamlike state. It really is a dreamlike state. But you have, you have no control over when you're going to wake up. So the only thing that you can do is understand who you are. Um, every second you have, keep witnessing your thoughts. Keep telling yourself, well, if I can see my thoughts, then I am not my thoughts. And keep making more, uh, more space between these thoughts. Keep separating yourself. This is the object, my, the self here, whatever's perceiving this is the subject. Then everything I see is an object. Well, I cannot be that. I cannot be that. Even this emotion that comes up, it is an object. I cannot be that. And believe it or not, understanding and knowledge is the first step and we must have it. We must have it. Then, the more we continue to look at things and, and understand things, we begin to internalize it until we start living it. We become it. That is the process. So the more you do it, the quicker it will happen for you. This is why Nisargadatta says, earnest, this is the only thing you need. You do not even need a guru. Once you understand that you must witness these thoughts, and all you need to do is sit in silence. Do it as often as possible. That is really all you need. And notice his words in the previous chapter. Telling this questioner that you will not need me anymore. And that is what I said. A true guru is only showing their followers the reality so that they will not be dependent on them anymore. They will not be dependent on them anymore. That is the goal. So Maharaj, let the dream unroll itself to its very end. You cannot help it, but you can look at the dream as a dream and refuse the stamp of reality. Questioner, here I am sitting before you. I am dreaming and you are watching. You are watching me talking in my dream. What is the link between us? Maharaj, my intention to wake you up is the link. My heart wants you awake. I see you suffer in your dream and I know that you must wake up to end your woes. When you see your dream as a dream, you wake up. But in your dream itself, I am not interested it is enough for me to know that you must wake up. You need not bring your dream to a definite conclusion or make it noble, happy, or beautiful. All you need is to realize that you are dreaming. Stop imagining. Stop believing. See the contradictions, the incongruities, the falsehood, and the sorrow of the human state. The need to go beyond. Within the immensity of space floats a tiny atom of consciousness and in it the entire universe is contained. Questioner, there are affections in the dream which seem real and everlasting. Do they disappear on waking up? Maharaj, in dream you love some and not others. On waking up 
you find you are love itself embracing all personal love however intense genuine invariably binds love and freedom is love of all do you understand that's why you can't fake this path you can't fake this path when you are in the the oneness space the the nothingness you you will not see people attacking other people it just doesn't happen you, it just does not happen okay so it uh, and i think i went over this once before the love that we have in the personhood because everything in the purse in the personhood is personal it is selfish so the love that we have in the personhood is selfish we want something out of it we we don't you know the the reason that we're looking out for our partner in this relationship is because it's all about us we don't want that partner to leave us so we'll do whatever we need to do to make that partner happy but we are self-serving constantly self-serving we have to understand that when you break all attachments and you get into the oneness or the nothingness you have the timeless love the timeless it, it, it it's not anything it's not that intense love that you feel in the personhood but it's a love of everything you don't wish anything bad for anybody it's just a love of everything okay this is what you find in the oneness and people cannot fake that out here questioner people come and go one loves whom he meets one cannot love all maharaj when you are love itself you are beyond time and numbers you have to understand this and this is very important here see the questioner is asking the question from the personhood from delusion from believing that he is an individual so he's saying well you love who you meet you love one person that is your partner you cannot love everybody if you see people as separate individuals people um and not related to you in any way shape or form uh, you can't love everybody you can't love everybody but when you see yourself as the source and you understand that there is nobody else who is there not to love that is the, that is what you have to dwell on when you see yourself as the nothingness there are no individual people who is there not to love So although the ocean has individual waves popping up, it's still only one body of water. Who is there not to love? It is only when we're in the sleep and we believe that we're individuals and we have attachments and we're still bought into our religious beliefs and our desires and our concepts that we have all of these disagreements with people and the egos come in and let's stop on everybody's neck um, there's not enough room in the universe for two people that is that is person it is it is vile it is vile it is hateful and it is violent when you get into the nothingness there is no one else there is none of this and uh, I, I really don't do it justice with words there just is none of this it actually makes it difficult to see all of this play out with, with the with the egos and the person it makes it very difficult to actually be in the presence of all of this it's just foul it's vile and it's foul that, that, and violent it's very violent Maharaj when you are love itself you are beyond time and numbers in loving one you love all because there is no one else in loving all you love each one and all are not exclusive questioner you say you are in a timeless state does it mean that past and future are open to you did you meet Vashishta Muni Rama's guru Maharaj the question is in time and about time again you are asking me about the contents of a dream 
Timelessness is beyond the illusion of time. It is not an extension of time. He who called himself Vashishta knew Vashishta. I am beyond all names and shapes. Vashishta is a dream in your dream. How can I know him? You are too much concerned with your past and future. It is all due to your longing to continue to protect yourself against extinction. And as you want to continue, you want others to keep you company, hence your concern with their survival. But what you call survival is but the survival of a dream. Death is preferable to it. There is a chance of waking up. <coughs> Questioner, you are aware of eternity. Therefore, you are not concerned with survival. Maharaj, it is the other way around. Freedom from all desire is eternity. All attachments implies fear, for all things are transient, and fear makes one a slave. This freedom from attachment does not come with practice. It is natural when one knows one's true being. Love does not cling. Clinging is not love. Questioner. So there is no way to gain detachment? Maharaj, there is nothing to gain. Abandon all imaginings and know yourself as you are. Self-knowledge is detachment. All craving is due to a sense of insufficiency. When you know that you lack nothing, that all there is is you and yours, desire ceases. You have to understand the, the, the fullness and the totality of those words. That you are everything. What can you possibly lack? You are, you, are, you are just absolutely everything that you can see and not see. What can you possibly lack? It's only when we believe that we are this personhood, that we are separate from others, that we have these attachments, we have this fear of death. Like he said, the fear of extinction, um, uh, keeping up with the Joneses, I don't have this, I don't have that. Why do they have this and I don't have that? It, it's, I'm telling you, when you get out of that thinking and you get, it, I, I don't even have, there's no way to explain it. There really is no way to explain it. There, there's nothing that you desire. You, you're, you're okay just as you are. And you're okay to be. You're okay to be. See? Questioner. To know myself, I must practice awareness? Maharaj, there's nothing to practice. <laughs> to know yourself, be yourself. To be yourself, stop imagining yourself to be this or that. Just be. Let your true nature emerge. Don't disturb your mind with seeking. And this is why I keep telling you, if you sit in silence and just get in touch to this presence that is within you, this presence that you've always known was yourself, the only, the only um, switch up that we have to make is that this presence that we've always known as ourself, we believed was the body-mind. So we have to understand that we can actually witness the psychological mind. We witness this body. This presence is still here. This is who we are. And we absolutely need nothing all desires and needs and fears are born of the body-mind. Everything we need in life is for the body, to keep the body going, or to keep the mind happy. But the self needs absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And there is no more seeking. There is no more... Uh, Feeling like like you're uh, like you're missing out on something. Like uh, all these feelings that we have in the person, are they're gone. They're absolutely gone. 
So when you know that you lack nothing, that all there is is you and yours, desire ceases. Questioner, to know myself, I must practice awareness, Maharaj. There is nothing to practice. To know yourself, be yourself. To be yourself, stop imagining yourself to be this or that. Just be. Let your true nature emerge. Don't disturb your mind with seeking. Questioner, it will take much time if I just wait for self-realization. Maharaj, what have you to wait for when it is already here and now? As I've been telling you from day one, you are already that. You have nothing to do. You have nowhere to go. You have nothing to seek. You are already that. Here's Maharaj's words. What have you to wait for when it is already here and now? You have only to look and see. Look at yourself, at your own being. You know that you are and you like it. Abandon all imagining, that is all. Do not rely on time. Time is death. He who waits dies. Life is now only. Do not talk to me about past and future. They exist only in your mind. Questioner, you too will die. Maharaj, I am already dead. Physical death will make no difference in my case. I am, I am a timeless being. I am free of desire and fear because I do not remember the past or imagine the future. When there are no names and shapes, how can there be desire and fear? With desirelessness comes timelessness. I am safe because what is not cannot touch what is. You feel unsafe because you imagine danger. Of course your body as such is complex and vulnerable and needs protection, but not you. Once you realize your own unassailable being, you will be at peace. Questioner, how can I find peace when the world suffers? Maharaj, the world suffers for very valid reasons. If you want to help the world, you must be beyond the need of help. Then all of your doing as well as not doing will help the world most effectively. We must first understand who we are before we can help anybody else. And we're not going to change what's out there. That is part of our dream and our imagination, part of our, our, our needing to feel important or, or needed or something. It, we're not going to change anything out there. Each and every single one of us has to want to wake up and we have to do the work. The way to change out there is to first change yourself. And then you will be able to lead by example. And that encourages other people to change. This is how the world will change. We all have to start leading by example. Questioner, how can non-action be of use where action is needed? Maharaj, where action is needed, action happens. Man is not the actor. His purpose is to be aware of what is happening. His very presence is action. The window is the absence of the wall, and it provides air and light because it is empty. Be empty of all mental content, of all imagination and effort. And the very absence of obstacles will cause reality to rush in. If you really want to help a person, keep away. If you are emotionally committed to helping, you will fail to help. You may be very busy and be very pleased with your charitable nature, but not much will be done. A man is really helped when he is no longer in need of help. All else is just utility it's just to feed our own egos I mean this is the big secret to world peace this is the big secret you must first know who you are your true self and then you will lead by example and that light emanating from you will will cause others to gravitate towards you 
and and they will want what you have and that will cause them to want to know their self you know it reminds me of that old saying give a man a fish he will eat for a day teach a man to fish he will eat for a lifetime so by you believing that you're going out and doing charitable work or or calling yourself a light worker and you're doing something out there when you have not understood who you are first you're going there with um, you don't even really understand why you're going there you do not understand how the ego is working through you and this really is not about helping the other people it's all about feeding your ego and until we understand that and we want to really help people get out of their stuff we've got to first understand who we are and um, that's the only way we can help people get out of their suffering that's the only way the world is going to change one by one we all have to start waking up it is only the ego who looks to go out there and do something to help other people because and I can only fall back on that saying right now I can help you I can I can bring you a blanket today yes it will it'll work for today what are you going to do tomorrow can I come back every single day for the rest of your life to hand you a blanket to hand you a sandwich and 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 people sometimes get get stuck in this uh, victim mentality that they're saying they want help but they're not willing to do the work to help themselves so if you give a man a fish he will eat for a day if you teach a man a fish he will eat for a lifetime you first have got to know who you are before you can help anybody know who they are and in order for, for this violence in the world to stop people have to know who they are and wake up out of this delusion and stop believing that they're individuals and seeing other people as separate from that this is where the violence comes from it's all of these egos and all of these concepts and the greed and the lust and the hatred and the violence out here and we are not going to change that in the personhood we are absolutely not going to change that okay so the only way to help change the world is to first know who you are know your true self okay questioner there is not enough time to sit and wait for help to happen one must do something Maharaj by all means do but what you can do is limited the self alone is unlimited give limitlessly of yourself all else you can give in small measures only you alone are immeasurable to help is your very nature even when you eat and drink you help your body for yourself you need nothing you are pure giving beingness endless inexhaustible when you see sorrow and suffering be with it do not rush into activity neither learning nor action can really help be with sorrow and lay bare its root helping to understand is real help questioner my death is nearing Maharaj your body is short of time not you time and space are in the mind only you are not bound just understand yourself that itself is eternity I'm going to leave that here that is a lot here um, he's saying it over and over again that really the only way that we can help anybody is to first know ourselves. how can we help other people get out of suffering I mean truly get out of suffering that is not temporary that is not giving them a pill to take that is not um, telling them to distract themselves or or keep a gratitude journal no what is the real way that we can help people to get out of the suffering we first have to know how to do that ourselves everything else is a concept and it is temporary in time and space of the body mind give a man a fish he will eat for a day teach a man to fish he will have food to eat for the rest of his life okay you guys have a blessed day